What up, this is Ramaskreen. I'm covering the AFI Film Festival this week, and one of the films that are hitting this event is none other than Thelma, which I have seen a wonderful drama, love drama, with mystery, romance, and some superpower, correct? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm here with the director himself and co-writer, Joachim. How you doing? I'm good, man. You're good. good. Congratulations on this film. Thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, tell us a bit about uh, the inspiration for this story. I mean, uh, who came up with the story idea for the, originally? Yeah. No, thanks a lot, man. I co-wrote this with Eskil Fucht, who I've written three features with previous. But they haven't been supernatural stories. We've done more sort of drama, human stories of different kinds. But um, so we wanted to try to kind of liberate ourselves from some of that kind of those virtues of the serious drama and try to have fun with pure visual set pieces you know we're dealing with snakes and blinking lights and underwater sequences and just like let our imagine run free so that's been a, kind of a the fun process with this one now i don't want to spoil away for my fans but uh is it fair to say that this this superpower element i mean um is it X-Men inspired? I mean, how did, how did you come up with it? <laughs> I guess, you know, on some level, this is the weird combination of this film. On one level, it has that kind of X-Men coming to understand who you are, coming to understand your superpower element. Yeah. Yet it's also a coming out film about a young woman who comes from kind of a serious Christian background in on the west coast of Norway. She goes into Oslo, the main city in Norway. Yeah. And she falls in love with a girl and experiences like a great time, but she also feels ashamed and conflicted. And, you know, it's really the drama of becoming an adult and breaking away from your parents when they don't understand who you need to be to be yourself, you know. And so what did you see in, I hope I pronounced the names correctly, Ailey and Kaya, yeah. that you cast these two wonderful ladies in these roles? That was, that was kid, the biggest challenge with this film. It wasn't 200 CGI shots or prolonged underwater shooting or any of that. It was actually finding who the hell was going to play Thelma. So I, I met close to a thousand girls or several hundred people to try to find her. And when, and when Ailey Harbo showed up... Uh, we should really quickly we understood she's the one. You know, she's incredibly gifted as an actress. She she was just 22 when she did the film. But she's also very brave. She did a lot of her own stunts, and she wasn't scared of snakes, which was good, you know. And then we had to find Kaya, the other girl, and to be at the equal level of, of Ailey. So that was another round of a difficult chase. And finally, we found this musician, Kaya Wilkins. She's a singer-songwriter. She's American, Norwegian. She lives in Brooklyn and has a great musical career. And we kind of kidnapped her out of it. And she'd never acted before, but she's obviously someone that will act more, I think, and, and just a great talent. So let me ask you about that, the snakes. And uh, there's a bunch of imagery here. I, I saw caterpillars as well and a bunch of close-ups on, on certain animals and also some uh, illustrations. Uh, can you talk a bit about the significance of putting that in this story? What the importance of those? I mean, I think it's just sort of the fairy tale mythology that I grew up with, both from, on one hand, Stephen King, you know, and witch stories and the idea of, of people that had an affiliation with nature, but also in Norway, like the fairy tale tradition, you know, of, of European fairy tales that were, you know, uh, very often about the, the anxiety of the creatures from the woods and all this stuff. But the, the story is really about our anxiety is modern human beings about the nature inside ourselves our passion and our emotions and how we're suppressing that and and it's kind of a cathartic almost tending towards a revenge story of that kind of explosion yeah. of emotion when you're actually brave enough to step up and fight for yourself i see that too when i saw the movie um the underwater sequence how challenging was that we had a couple of underwater sequences uh, i mean no one you know, I don't want it to be unsafe. We had great stunt coordinators and lots of divers on set and everything was safe. But, you know, I come from skateboarding, actually. I was like a sk skateboard sponsor skater when I was younger. I did a lot of skate videos. That's how I got started. And I remember, like, the anxiety of, like, having stunt on, like, people jumping down staircases on skateboards. And, and, and in this film, the first time as a fiction director, I really started having that feeling of, of having actors that were underwater for a minute at a time. And, and uh, everything was done safe. But, you know, I was, you know, you, whew, you feel responsible as a director to, that, to get your shot, but also to treat the actors properly. And I'm very glad that Eileen was such an amazing swimmer and had such amazing training before she went on set to do this. But we got through it in a good way. And she's very proud of the, of the scenes. And so am I, you know. I'm surprised there was no skateboard sequence. <laughs> yeah, that's the next one, you know, supernatural skateboard. Uh, that's something to think about. So what's your reaction to this film now um, 
finally coming out to, for US audience, especially at the AFI Film Festival. How does that make you feel? I'm very happy. I was here at the AFI with the Oslo, August 31st, an uh, earlier film I did. Great audience reactions then, that, then, and I'm looking forward to screening it now on Saturday. You know, um, it's fun to be in Los Angeles, and we're releasing the film in general release here on the 24th of November, Thanksgiving weekend, and it's coming out in New York actually tomorrow on the 10th. So, and then it'll roll out into the country. So, AFI was kind of a wonderful starting point for the film, I think. And then I hope audiences in different cities in America will go see it, you know, and not be scared at its foreign language because. I don't know. I don't want to try to sell my film, but it, to be f quite frank, it's also homage to American genre movies, and I'm I'm curious for the response. Yeah. Now, when I ask you about the theme, um, it's 2017. You would think that in this today's culture, you know, something like coming out or same gender relationship is like you know as normal as Tuesday. But how how is that in in Norway? How's the culture there? I mean, what what do you think the significance of bringing out the theme of that theme of Thelma uh, to the audience? What do you, what do you hope the audience will get? Um, I think it's important, even though, like you're saying, I live in the city, you know, it's a natural thing. I'm surrounded by people who are, you know, have all kinds of orientations of who they want to love. And that's how it should be, obviously. But there's still um, parts of our society, I think, both in America and Norway, that are using religion, different religions, as structures towards personal freedom, personal liberation. And I think it's important to just mind that and that a lot of that becomes internalized in those individuals as, as shame of, of accepting who you are and all that, you know? So it's very important to keep talking about that. Uh, but also the, the, um, the whole issue of coming out also in this film becomes a metaphor for all of us, you know, about like, what, who are we really? And, and what are the conditions under uh, how we accept ourselves, how we love ourselves, how, you know, our, so, so I think it's, it's, um, it's both that theme, but it's also that theme as a metaphor for, for the importance of the individual to really find your way. My final question, um, being an outsider, you know, a filmmaker from Norway, uh, how do you see us, the Hollywood industry? I mean, I mean, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with uh, the other Joachim, who, who directed Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, yeah. Uh, he's also um, making it out here in Hollywood. So what is the stigma that the Norwegian film industry has about us, Hollywood industry? No, I think generally in Norway, we grew up with primarily watching Hollywood movies, mm -hmm. and that's the tradition, you know. And even in this film, I'm, I'm greatly inspired by, you know, Brian De Palma and a lot of the directors that took on Stephen King in the 80s that did marvelous work, you know. So Hollywood has always been this wonderful thing. What I'm slightly worried about at the moment, and I think a lot of, I mean, European audience members, is just that the bigger, bigger films, the bigger studio movies are just becoming sequels and becoming superhero movies, you know. And we need to make sure that those films also have some food for thought. And I think that's that's the challenge right now. But, you know, you have a lot of great... I mean, at, at this moment, while we're sitting here talking, we have people like Paul Thomas Anderson uh, working. We have Martin Scorsese is still very, very vitally making amazing cinema. And he's one of the most important directors of all time. You know, you, there are still a lot of great filmmakers working in America. And, and you know, I keep watching American movies with great joy. Well, I'm glad to say, or I'm grateful, that in the sea of sequels, prequels, and reboots, there is originality like in Thelma. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you.